to your next challenge. This one is called exclamation mark series number two. Remove all exclamation marks from the end of sentence. The description basically reads the same. Let's go right to the examples to try to make this clear. Notice the first example uh, is a simple high ending in an exclamation mark. It gets stripped. Example two, now you have three, same deal. You get the same result. The ending punctuation marks are removed. Third example is nice because it shows you what to do when the exclamation mark doesn't occur at the end and notice that it's preserved. Same thing in four, one is removed because it's at the very end of everything and one's preserved. This example is nice because it shows you with separate words, you may have thought that you should clean up all words within the overall string, but you don't. Notice how this one's preserved and this one is stripped because it's at the end of the entire string. And then if there are no exclamation marks, just return the input unfiltered. So I think those examples did a pretty good job of um, illustrating what you have to do with some nice edge cases included there. So we'll head over to the, co the coding portion. As usual, this is your chance to pause the video and make an honest effort at this and then come on back and resume when you're ready. For my solution, I wanted to try to iterate over the input just one time and sort of build my solution that way. As you can imagine, there are a lot of enumerable methods that can help you in this case. I'm not going to use those here, uh, but you could have you know, read the input in reverse to try to peel the exclamation marks off and uh, sort of reversed that result again. And I didn't want to do that. You can write it very compactly if you do, but you know, I'm kind of thinking about the underlying work that's happening. I don't want to go over the collection of characters multiple times. Probably won't factor in because our input sizes are going to be small, but I try to approach it like I would a large scale problem. So with that in mind, that's sort of where I'm going with my solution. And we'll introduce a new class that's helpful for working with strings. So to start, I'm just going to do one of our normal print statements. And we'll just say what the input is in case we run into trouble. Then let's iterate over the collection. I'll talk about this new class I'm going to use in a minute. But it does what it sounds like. It builds a string. And there's a reason I'm choosing this over a normal string that we'll get to. Finally, I'm going to make a for loop to iterate over the collection of characters, chars. Notice, remember that a string is a collection of chars. We're going to use the for loop in a different way, um, and I think that's instructive here. We typically think that for loops always start at with an index of zero and sort of increment by one until we reach the end of a collection but we're gonna sort of flip that on its head here. And we're gonna parse the string in reverse order. So the string has a length property that we've seen, but note that I can't say string length because if I try to access at that, I'll actually be one beyond the end of the collection. So we always minus one. That's because collections are zero based. So if you had a collection of size four, each of the elements would be numbered 0, 1, 2, 3. There's no fourth element that would go outside the bounds of the collection and cause an error, in case that wasn't clear. And then since we're starting at the end and proceeding toward the beginning, I'm going to, instead of, uh, instead of checking that I is past the end of the string, I'm going to go the other way and make sure it's greater than or equal to zero. That's sort of the valid bounds, right? I wouldn't want to go down to negative one. If I tried to access a collection by index negative one, that would also be very bad. And because we're going backwards, I'm decrementing I by one every time. 
But again, you could um, increment or decrement by two, by three. There's no, this isn't set in stone, and I'm just trying to show that you can make these loops work for you, however you see fit. So great, we've got something here that will go backwards through the string. And I'm going to use that to sort of ignore the exclamation marks until I get to my first character that's not an exclamation mark. And that's sort of where I'm going to add to my collection. So um, in that spirit, what if I say if string, this is our input, right? S at index i, which is going to start at the very end to start. So we'll just, to give a concrete example and make this clear, we'll just consider this input while we talk about this. So s of i at the very start, we're starting at the end, would be the exclamation mark, right? That'll be the first character we get in this loop. And we're going to say if that is equal to, remember to use single quotes for a char, not double quotes, those make strings. A string is a collection of chars, it's not a collection of strings. So if that's the case, I can say continue. And this continue applies to the for loop, the, the repeated loop. It would also apply to a while loop. And it basically says, you know what? Don't do any more processing here. Go back to the top, increment or decrement in this case your values, update the values, and then start from the top and run execution again. So you can imagine if we had 10 exclamation marks or you know a few, it's gonna go past one, continue, continue, continue. And then once we're past those three exclamation marks, finally we'll get past this statement. And whatever we write down here will actually execute. So for that, I'm going to say, we should probably go talk about st string builder now. Um, this is going to be a way to add the character to our string builder, but let's go talk about string builder quick. Look this one up on the doc page. Um, notice this short description represents a mutable string of characters. This is, this may not sound like anything, but it's actually important. You should know that the string class, um, you might be thinking, big deal, I use concatenation with strings all the time. I say string plus some text and it makes a new value, it updates. But string is actually immutable. What's happening underneath the hood is that it's creating a brand new string every time you try to modify it or concatenate to a string. And so there's some waste involved with that. You're talking about um, probably deallocating memory and reallocating and building up a whole new string again, and that can be very wasteful if you're going to be manipulating a string a lot. So this string builder class comes to the rescue. It is supposed to be a more efficient way of modifying strings if you have to modify them a lot. So that's, that's special about this. Um, notice the common method append. This is just going to append at the end. You saw I used insert because I want to actually go at the beginning. And the reason I did that was because we're going through the input in reverse order, right? So I want to continually put the characters that we're grabbing at the beginning. If I didn't, it would print them out in reverse order, right? If I had append, it would say, it would ignore the exclamation mark. Then the first letter it would add is the I, the second letter it would add is this capital H. And then by the time our loop was done, my answer would be I capital H, which is obviously backwards. So by always inserting elements in the front, when I get to I, okay, I goes to the front, great. Then I go through the next iteration of the loop, I come to H, and then it's gonna put H at the front of my string builder. So then when my loop exits, I'm left with this hi, which is what I want. And like I said, with some of those other approaches, maybe if you're using some of the enumerable methods, you're looking at calling reverse, which is basically going to go over the whole collection again to get its work done. You don't really see that because you just type reverse, but somewhere that work is being done. And I didn't want to go through the collection multiple times. So 
I'm trying to do that here. I don't know how efficient this insert method is. Um, a lot of times they'll list that, but that'd be nice if String Builder has a reference to the beginning of this of the um, the string that it maintains. Then it can very quickly um, add to that. Um, if it's you know if it's implemented as an array, it might have to shift. So I don't know the underlying implementation of string builder I don't know bottom line is you would actually have to you'd want to benchmark if performance were really critical to you and you really cared you know you could try implementing this way tests on large inputs mark your times and then do another implementation that you think is good and you know sort of compare the results I, I'm not going to go that deep with this feel free to investigate that if you like so yeah, we had um, insert that's going to give us the order we want so we don't have to reverse the string we build. And then another important uh, method up to the string builder class is that you can convert it right to the string you need. And remember our contract here says we must return a string. And so you'll see that's typically what you do when you're done processing this two string we have so um, this kind of solves the problem it comes up short in a small way that we'll see when we test this if you want you can pause the video and try and figure out what's missing here why this solution won't quite work out otherwise let's go ahead and test it it's mostly right Console, oh sure, so they're yelling at us for using console because we didn't implement that class and we're not going to, that's built in for us using system, right? Hopefully you're starting to remember some of these. If you have using system, you can access console. And then also string builder, right? We didn't make that. Let's go see. We need this using system text for that. So let's add that too system text that should cover us let's try testing this okay good so we got an error and we got through the high test we got through high with three exclamation marks but look at this we had an input exclamation mark hi they expected that to go through unfiltered which is right according to their rules but notice our algorithm returned hi and it peeled this exclamation mark off. And so if you look at the method, we just sort of say, hey, if we ever encounter an exclamation mark, skip it, just continue. You never reach this line here and just go to the next letter. But we know from the instructions that we only want the ones at the end. So the question is how to get around this. What can we do to only make the ones at the end get removed? One way that you could do this that I did, I'm going to make a Boolean variable that I'm going to kind of use. I'm just going to think of it as a flag. I'll call it filter. And I'm going to initialize that to true. And that's sort of my way of saying, for the start, I'm going to assume that all exclamation marks need to be filtered. And then I can tweak this at a time that's beneficial to me to false. And then I'll say, hey, if you encounter an exclamation mark at this point, it's a valid character. So then I add to my condition, right? Instead of simply saying, hey, if just any exclamation mark do this, I can add an extra condition. And if you remember, we had the, we learned about um, logical operators here. I'm going to use the double ampersand for an and, which requires that both conditions are true. So what if I say the character is an exclamation mark and our filter is active? Then I want to skip. If filter is not active, um, then don't just skip it, include it. And then the, po the important thing that we have to do is to update our filter at the appropriate time to go false so we no longer skip exclamation marks. And when would that time be? Well, it would be at the point where 
we first encounter a character that's not an exclamation mark. And that's the, basically the first time you get through this. So I can simply say filter equals false here, right? Imagine at the start with three exclamation marks. You're hitting an exclamation mark, and we initialize filter to true. So yeah, skip it. Hit another exclamation mark, skip it. Hit it, the third one, skip it. Finally, we get to that I, it comes through. Filter's still true, but notice this condition is no longer true. The character under examination is no longer an exclamation mark. It's a I. So it's not going to, it's not going to continue. It needs both conditions to be true to continue. So we do get down to this point in execution. Finally, we say our filter's false. We insert the I in the string builder, and then we continue processing letters. Maybe there's H's, maybe there's a bunch of other stuff. Finally, we get to the beginning. We hit another exclamation mark. So this condition is true, right? It is an exclamation mark, but now this one's not. It had been set to false. So again, you will not continue. You will make it down to this point in execution and the exclamation mark will in fact be inserted. And we should see that if we run the test again. Good, yeah, so that error is gone now. And yeah, that, um, that pretty much does it for my solution. We'll run the larger test suite. Um, they'll tell us to clean up. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, yeah, let's just run the larger collection. Attempt. Lots of green, that's, that's our favorite color when running tests, right? So it looks good. There you have it. Um, we'll definitely see some variation when we submit this. I imagine a lot of people just went for one-liners that are easy to write, um, but we'll see. I'll go ahead and submit this off. Again, I was trying to do it in one pass. I thought it would be nice to introduce you to the String Builder class. That's another motivating factor for doing it this way for me. And I thought it was good to look at another way of running a for loop. I'd say those are the, the takeaways of this. If you modify strings a lot, do consider the String Builder class because the string, it's hidden from you, but it's actually making a new string every time you tweak it. Even a little bit, you change one character, it's an all new string. It's got to construct it again, all over again. So we'll submit. So stream. Oh, that's a nice one. I like that. Yeah, lots of people going with trim end. Trim end. Yeah. Here's one with string ends with. So, okay, it would have been good to go through the string class and look at some more methods. Look at this. We learned about regular expressions in a previous video. Notice we kind of know what this dollar sign means now, right? It, it happens at the end of the string. That's cool. That's a good usage right there. The plus sign means one or more exclamation marks, any number, one or more. At the occurring only at the end that's why this one works cool uh, this guy's kind of rolling his own like we did or girl don't know Henri hey Ash. yeah so lots of um, lots of variation in this one I, I missed trim dot and that's a nice really very clear you know it's pretty obvious what this is doing so yeah, cool. Build up your toolbox a little more by looking over some of these solutions. Good stuff. I hope you found this video helpful. Hit me up with questions. Otherwise, we'll keep going with challenges. Thanks for watching.